Nigeria was not divided. In 15 years, a serving military officer being treated like an animal every day in chains, hands, neck, hands, uh, leg, and neck. I was in solitary detention for five years, two months. My parents were only allowed to see me twice in 15 years. And when I, they finally I got my freedom, God willing, I came and met an empty home. They were not there. You know the pains of that? I'm their, their best friend. You know what this psychological impact has? Yet, we always look unto God Almighty in what we say and what we do. And I have forgiven those who did. Ask me why. Why? Every person in life, whether you know it or you don't know it, you are on trial. If you have freedom, you are on trial. If you lost freedom, you are on trial. If you are a rich man, you are on trial. If you are a poor person, you are on trial. If you are a leader, you are on trial. If you have been led, you are on trial. Any single thing. You are questioning me here. You are on trial because you have the initiative here. I'm on trial because I'm responding to your questions. And that is life. So the fact that it is God who permitted the trial in itself, I look unto God. I don't know what he desires to achieve. I know what he wants to do with me. So all I have to do is turn on to God alone. But those who persecuted me themselves, I wish and I pray they will now have the opportunity to come to the fore. Look at themselves, look at their ages, and look at what they have done, knowing fully well that I have forgiven them. I want them to come to the fore and tell the world the truth. That's all I want. Will that help with your healing process? Not my healing process. It will educate Nigeria. But have you healed? I am, because I trust in God Almighty. So here's why I asked the question mm -hmm. about healing. Yes. Should you become president right. in 2023? Nigerians would want to know mm -hmm. where the line will be drawn it's between actually fighting perhaps those who are involved in corrupt practices and vengeance. No. For me, the very moment I stepped out of prison, the media, who covered my stepping out of the prison, the prison staff, family, Many, many numerous well-wishers knew the first thing I did. I stopped. I prayed for those who persecuted me, those who wrote all the lies against me, those who subjected me to punishments, those who believed that their punishments also were not to allow me to be seen to be a normal person because of the nature of the punishment. I pray for God Almighty's forgiveness upon them and peace on Nigeria and for God Almighty to give us the wisdom to continue to be. They can, you can ask your colleagues, I did that. But it's a Herculean thing to do. I have done, and I have no reason to look back. I'm bigger than that. Yeah, it's very important for the country. Because yeah, sure. uh, the, in trying to move the country forward, I we can never be see backwards. Vengeance is not my own, is not my upbringing, is not in my religion, is not in my belief. Love, affection, I have been an an advocate, and as I have been conversing all across, the issue of peace, unity in Nigeria, even as a very little toddler in the military as a lieutenant, numerous youth associations were created or registered by me. And I brought them up in this sense. That's why today, if there is trouble in the South, I can easily move to those associations and those people, the elders and the youth, I can talk to them. I moved to any part in the North, and I have been doing that. And this country, numerous these associations can attest to this. I have been doing this and sunk, and I'm not seeking for reward or to be eulogized before the media. God has seen and known what I have been doing. And there are numerous of such associations. I personally registered, and they are the ones that are providing unity in Nigeria but, today. But it would seem that that's suggesting that mm -hmm. you have broken, you have your basis in the South. Mm -hmm. But we will come to that. Now, right. we, what we see... Mm. especially since the return to democracy is former military officers mm. transitioning from the mm. military mm. to civilian rule. Mm. So my question is, in a democracy, what does a former military officer have to offer? Democracy, a military officer is trained to be versatile. And it all depends on the strength of that person. It is personality evaluation issue. If you believe from the open programs that brought you up as a versatile person. Primarily, what is required? Leadership qualities in an individual. The fact that Mr. A, as a civilian, comes to say, I am a politician and I am promoting politics and I want to be in politics. It doesn't mean he possesses the qualities of leadership, desirous of this country, that can have an impact in changing the country. 
But a military officer might have the qualities, and I'm not saying all the military officers have all the leadership qualities. Leadership qualities are numerous against what you see in many textbooks today, from 17 to 18 and the rest. I found myself in detention, and out of the difficulties of solitary detention, lately I came up with 46 strange qualities of leadership, and I'm writing on that. I have given that to one of the institutions in UK on leadership, and they are working on it because I'm a graduate of that school since I came out. All right, so you know it is no secret that mm. Nigerian politics is largely mm. uh, money-driven. Mm. Now, in 15 years mm. in jail, right. or prison as you like mm. to call it, mm. uh, it was reported that you lost everything yes. and had to come out to start afresh. Correct. Now you're running for president. Correct. How are you able to survive, or how were you able to survive this entire time, and how do you intend to fund your we, campaign? We believe we have invested too much in interactions in collaborative activities yesterday, today, and tomorrow. When it comes, we'll continue on our own passages. We continue to now understand that the goodwill we have established in Nigerians will continue to bring to us that confidence of support that is coming to us. Already, for the journey thus far, coming before the primaries to the primaries up to this point, it is not me. It's our friends and brothers displaying goodwill. Even my coming here is goodwill. I didn't drive myself here. I am brought. Let me draw your attention to something. You're quoted to have said mm. that now what Nigeria needs now is leadership. Correct. We have to get out of where we are, and people will come and use the name of religion to say because he's a Muslim, he cannot be this. Because he's a Christian, he cannot be this. So my question to you is that from what you see in a political atmosphere, mm. Do you fear that religion could be a factor in the 2023 presidential election? Yeah, definitely. Why do you I say fear. so? Ask me why. See, at every given time in the life of a country, there are seasons. When the season demands that you are not up to that point where leaning on a particular religion might bring friction or suspicion or build mutual suspicion from even within your party and without then the question is sit down at the beginning and do what is called templating and determine your go areas and no go areas in the interest of the country in the interest of peace and security in the interest of acceptance of the country anything that will bring friction in your journey to leadership is called no go area avoid it that is maturity, that is understanding the country. Where you become insensitive to the feelings and understanding of the people, then definitely it shows. When tomorrow comes and you are settled with leadership. A leader, though, is expected to take tough decisions for and behalf of the people. It, decisions might not be popular. But religion, ethnic issues, cannot be seen to be played with. And if for whatever reason you have to go that way, then you have to spend a lot of time, a lot of time to educate, to make presentations to all segments of the society. You carry religious leaders of both sides, you carry ethnic groups of both sides, you carry national stakeholders of both sides and say, for these reasons, this is the way I'm going. Please guide me. That's why I tell you, we are making visitations to tap from the tower of wisdom and knowledge of our elders without fear. Let me ask you this question, which is related to that and the 2023 general elections, as I have done with other presidential right. candidates. Right. I'd like to draw your attention to the peace accord right. which you signed right. and question whether you believe that it will have an impact mm. on the elections next yes, year. Yes, it will have. The fact that intermittent uh, interactions minus peace accord alone Intermittent interaction, the fact that all candidates met together and shook hands is a big plus. You have seen the chemistry. We interacted with one another. Some, it was at that point, I saw some exchanging numbers. And the fact that you talk to candidate A, it is a tool to avert the unforeseen of tomorrow. So to me, there should be larger forums where candidates and their running mates and their party chairmen can come together to begin to talk on something called the Nigerian project.
The, uh, we, we are brothers and sisters. The fact that we are in different parties, it doesn't mean. The fact that we are looking for leadership of Nigeria, it doesn't mean we should be seen to be preparing for war. That is shallow-mindedness. That is disservice. If preparing for election is to prepare for war, that is an, ac an action left for animal kingdom, not for human beings who are civilized, who are cultured, who are respected, a country highly respected like Nigeria, where we should come and know that it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how poor you are. When the opportunity comes your way, destiny is rolling. And at the end of the day, somebody must emerge. And when he comes, in understanding God Almighty and knowing that he determines tomorrow, when he comes, thank God Almighty, key in with the person. Show your loyalty to the country by supporting the person or the leadership of the day. <laughs> that is the way we see Nigeria, and we are advocates of peace in this direction. We are building patriotism to embellish that so that we are enveloped by patriotism, fear of God Almighty. And looking at the motto of Nigeria, unity and faith, peace and progress. Anything outside this for certainly there are people who are creating something. Once you see a person who loves himself more, who cares for himself, who thinks about himself, and nothing else outside that, he is a liability, he is a problem to leadership of your country. Let's talk about something that uh, I believe you're an expert in, security. Now, as a former chief security officer to a military head of state, mm. why do you think that the security situation under civilian rule mm. has worsened? Mm. And how will your experience come to bear if you become president? It's a big question. It has simple answers. But every of the answers are bitter pills in the mouth and the soul of those who initiated our problems. The build-up and development of insurgency in Nigeria, and that is one peculiar thing that Nigerians ought to sit down and determine. Why was Nigeria having insurgency problem? When was the build-up started to achieve what? And if you allow the trend to continue, where is it taking your country to? The likes of those equating Nigeria with, I will tell you boldly, is Afghanistan and Congo DRC, then Nigeria. It is from the God-given resources, and you can never detach. Once you bring out honey in the open, you cannot complain of having flies. Nigeria's honey is in the open. Flies that are poisonous are all hanging around to fetch. They will end up contaminating it, and the owner might not use it properly. In security in Nigeria, there are numerous approaches to contain it. I have spoken in numerous fora, and to say that there are peculiar ways of getting it done. And the way it is today, the present structures of your armed forces, of your Joint Intelligence Bureau of Nigeria, the way you have, the paramilitary you have established, cannot capture the scope of the wide front of the threat facing Nigeria. And that is clear. You have to sit down and look at Nigeria from north to south, from all the uh, six zones of Nigeria, and understand that from your waters to the northern north, you understand that there are some special, special roles that might be seen to be governing Nigeria in providing effective security. That's one secret we have. From your river Niger to river Benue, from the roles and expected of you to do concerning security, from determining restructuring your ministries, including Ministry of Water Resources, leaving the ministerial status to now to come under security in terms of control of what is called movement security control in Nigeria, something new, in bringing technological support to the armed forces and to the new forces we intend to create. There are new forces that will man our shallow waters. There are additional roles for our Navy. There are additional roles for our military. There are additional roles away from police and from the military on the land. There are also special roles in your forestry, mountains, aerial view security, and your borders. There are technological deployment working with physical in terms of your borders to the hinterland. We, people have forgotten, created the six zones of Nigeria, 
and people don't know why, and are not utilizing the reasons why we created the six zones. We created it, if you can remember. The reason is why. And it has to do with containment of the insurgency in itself and easier security management of Nigeria on one side. Easier for administration, there's a reason for the six zones. Easier for us to call, fall back to our history, to our culture yesterday. Easier to understand that from the zones, Nigeria can, looking at agriculture, manage what is called dirty fertilizer politics so that you can now have maximum production against what we have today. You know, the type of fertilizer we have been using for the decades has chemicalized our soil. We have destroyed ourselves. We are not looking at that. You have a ministry, you have security apparatus, but we are not doing what we are doing. When tomorrow comes and you discover more money, then you realize that you have allowed liabilities coming to the country and you can no longer feed yourselves, but we are moving on that direction. So Nigeria should be put on a template in every sector and get it dissected and create programs that will run concurrent. It's bigger than just the fun fear of coming to talk to do it. No, it's a Herculean thing. It's a serious labor work. It's a serious brain work. It's a serious mobilization of gifted people from, different, from numerous sections with effective management of all of them so that every single month will have a quality time of management, of production, and of direction. Anything outside this, we're wasting time in providing leadership. No, in the last seven years, right. at least over eight, over eight trillion naira has been budgeted for defense right. in this country. Mm. There's no corresponding result mm. as far as analysis go. Mm. Mm. Now, as an intelligence expert, do you su subscribe to the narrative that we have not funded our defense appropriately, or are, they get, are these monies getting into the wrong pockets? There are two answers to this. Evidently, at the beginning of the management of insurgency of Nigeria, it was a mixed security and political interest management because we have done our homework. At the beginning, there were more negative stories of describing the threat, giving it a reason for why funds should not be released. But at, in this real sense of it, money released was meant for personal or political interests of some certain people. Most unfortunately, we have done taking the pains to go back into that. We look at allegations by some people from even within the system then and say, whatever they said was wrong, now we should go back to look for answers we have. And it is disturbing and most disheartening. Lives were lost of precious gallant officers, gallant soldiers who have, been, who have, who have perished out of desire to provide solutions. But they do not know the larger dirty politics governing what they did. Money was spent. So in a nutshell, because it's a long thing, the amount of money budgeted for, the result you have seen, is evaluated and known by everybody, including those involved. What here is all that matters is patriotism and the care to keep Nigeria in peace and intact. The money budgeted for, if it were to be from the structures I told you from, expanding the network, protecting your natural resources, getting the military to play its role, territorial integrity of Nigeria, then having some other segments who are effective, who are well equipped, who have a new doctrine governing every portion of Nigeria will allow every Nigerian to crisscross Nigeria to have data kept, to know what is called security data movement of every person, strangers and citizenry, all for the common good of people. But I tell you one thing, in Nigeria, there are two things I have seen. The desire to spend given excuses for it and the inability of the intellectuals to ask questions out of fear. On another hand, is Nigerians taking everything for granted because they do not want restrictions. The name of security, the other name of security is restrictions that you may not like for your common good, for the safety of your country, for the safety of your environment. And I tell you this, the intellectuals in Nigeria who are quick to condemn a government if they see security activities for their common good. There are types of security, passive and active. But when you get to most, let's say, all G7 countries, a Nigerian with whom you have just visited Nigerian airport and about to take off, you see rowdy sessions, you see shouting and arguments. 
you are on board that aircraft, but the moment they announce you to land in five minutes on that destination, com destination country, you will see Nigerians adjusting and complying. Complying with order even before you land. And soon after you land, Nigerians will not see that rowdy session. They will not be fighting. They will queue. They will behave as a gentleman or a gentlewoman. The question you ask yourself is why? Because the law works. Because that restriction, that broad order, is what we don't have. We're almost out of time now, but since you really question mm. the funding for the security agencies and right. where the monies go, right. should you become president tomorrow? Yes. Would you prosecute those whom you believe could be responsible for diverting the funds? Once we get there, we will be dri driven by patriotism and love of peace and security in this country. The records we shall see will determine what we do. But we'll be driven by love of this country. We'll be driven by patriotism. I was in the military. Just, the, the question is no, more direct. I know. The reason no, why the question no, is direct I also is, know. No, I, just one second. The reason why that question is direct mm. because mm. there are concerns with regard to how we fight corruption mm. and the importance of making sure that people who fail this country pay dearly mm. for it. And those who, to a great extent, the people who are culpable of things mm. like this are mm. very highly placed. Yes. High in the military mm. and high in the political space. How bold would you be I am, to go after these people? If you are talking of boldness, God willing, I'm not busting. Boldness in rendering service for Nigeria was, first of all, what fetched the persecution I went through yesterday. Because I don't know how you can ask me to paint white, black, and to paint black, white. Many of those who believe they hated my gods were the ones that punished me and called me names. In Nigeria, I believe... The even institutions, the two of them primarily, managing our security, uh, corruption issues in Nigeria are ill-equipped. They are too small. They are not organized properly. A situation, this is the way I see it, where you call a rabbit to be the chairman of arrested lions, you know is semantics. The rabbit will be running around the animal kingdom, but the lion will be sleeping the way it wants, and nothing will happen. So we have an understanding of two new agencies to come on board, where it will swallow these two, and it is bigger. It will go along with our economy. In Nigeria, I give you this insight, even though I don't want to be given some certain leakages with the secrets we have for Nigeria. You don't have national economic intelligence agency or a commission. You also do not have national electronic agency a management of your economy and determining data of corruption in terms of management your domestic activities international trade movement of your resources activities in your banks activities with your central bank ministry of finance ministry of national planning and in that understanding what they do with your resources you don't have how come you don't have the seeming structures and you want to relate with the international community that you can now drive who do they communicate with so once they come, they don't have relevant agencies they are working with in today's modern world. How can you manage corruption? So you have to reset the country first. Fair there well. is a lot of restructuring to do if you must contain uh, security. I'll give you one last one, one last one. The issue of purchase of equipment. Companies are known. Amount of money it was bought for. At what cost did it arrive in Nigeria? The age of the equipment. The authority that bought it. The connivance between agencies and arms are things we know. We have done a lot of investigation. Even from the black market? Yeah, even, from, even, even, from, and, uh, even in the black market, there is what is called the hidden market. Mm. I'd like to get your thoughts on June 12 being mm. designated, as, designated as the new Democracy Day. And this question is because of the history you share with late MK Abiola for Correct. working for General Sani Abaja. Correct. You must have heard a numerous things I have talked about, let's chief MK Abiola. In political settings in a country, at every given season, or at every given season that came in the past, there are challenges before leadership. And when it comes, it is what the leadership determines of it that will come out of it. I believe till this moment until tomorrow, between let's chief MK Abiola, General Abacha, General Abdesalam Abubakar, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangira, the leadership of his party, 
There are so much that Nigerians don't know. I said this to an international community that came when he was in detention in 1995. I said it to them also when they returned in 1997. And we need to get this open. And that's why on numerous occasions, I gave him numerous things he wrote. Himself and I have discussed so many things. One of the greatest disservice done to Nigeria were those documents I gave him, a Quran, a Bible, and A4 papers, over almost one and a half reams. He was writing things on a daily basis. Whosoever visited him, whatever happened to him, on one hand. On the issue of evaluating his part, uh, inv I mean, involvement in politics, his businesses, his international contacts, were things he was keeping, and I was assisting him to keep. One of the saddest things is the fact that where were these things kept away from his family or from the domains for Nigerians to dissect? It's a very, very important thing. So to me, if a government has taken decision of eulogizing him and adopting a policy in now uh, crowning his efforts with June 12th, yes, it's the decision of government of the day. And whosoever is in leadership occupies a position with information at hand with which they have taken decisions. Major Hamza Al Mustafa, I'd like to thank you very thank much you. for thank this you. conversation. Thank and you. like I would say to every political, every presidential candidate that I speak with, I wish you well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's you. a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure is thank mine you. as well. Thank you. Well, that's Political Paradigm. Thank you very much for your time. I'd like to remind you that you can catch this episode and others on YouTube. Simply search Political Paradigm or go through the website, channelstv.com. I am Terry Ikumi. Goodbye.